Mount Everest, the highest peak in the world, more than 8.8 .8 kilometers above sea level. But despite being the highest peak on the planet, there are many climbers who have conquered it, and some of them like Tenzing Norway, Edmund Hillary, and Autonema Sinha are quite popular and you also might have heard about them. But why not Kanchenjunga, even though it's not that much smaller? Actually, it has some spiritual reasons to it. The local people believe that it's been the abode of their gods and they even consider the mountain itself as a god. You can understand by the fact that the local Buddhists who reside there refer to it as Sleeping Buddha. And due to all these reasons, the authorities of Sikkim, where the mountain is located, had put an interdict on climbing this holy mountain. But back in 1955, an expedition was successfully conducted. It was the 25th of May 1955. Two gentlemen by the name of Joe Brown and George Ban were the first humans to reach the top of that mountain. Actually, the man who held this position was Charles Evan, who had been the deputy leader of the 1953 British Mount Everest expedition. In their team, other than these, there were more climbers who had joined them in this expedition. Norman Hardy, John Jackson, Tom McKinnon, Neil Mather, John Clegg, Tony Strether, Anulu, and Dawa Tensing. There were a total of 11 people on the expedition. It was a considerable event in mountaineering history and has an amazing storyline as well. February 12, 1955. It was a pleasant sunny day when the mountaineers stepped out to begin the journey by sailing off from Liverpool. Being known to the fact that the government of Sikkim had a dire objection to any attempt of climbing Panchenjunga, even from the other side, that's from Nepal, they decided to give it a shot. Panchenjunga is basically on the borders of Sikkim and Nepal, so whether you climb from this side or the other, be ready for the consequences. To prevent this, Evans, the guy who was leading, reached out to the demon of Sikkim before the actual departure. That meeting was held with the core intention of having the permission in hand, but things weren't going his way actually. However, when the meeting ended, Evans actually discovered a compromise that the expedition could go ahead provided that once they were sure of being able to reach the summit, they would go no higher from there and also wouldn't desecrate the vicinity of the summit. That was actually a typical something is better than nothing situation for Evans. So having the compromise signed, they left Darjeeling on May 14th for Main Banjong Village. So after traveling 16 miles in a dilapidated truck, they finally cross the last town and the actual journey begins from here. They reach the crest of Singalia Ridge, which is almost 3,000 meters above sea level, and there, they saw three rest houses of Indian government on the northern route. Then, going ahead, they reached Falud, and from there, they changed their direction to where it's west and entered the jungles of Nepal. Thankfully, they didn't see any tiger there, as that region is especially known for tiger attacks on humans. After reaching the Chiang Tapu region, they again decided to shift their step to where it's north, and passing through intensely cultivated terraced land, they reached the Kabang region, which is now known as Kawang. There was actually a long climb up to the pass, which led to the Yalong Valley, where again there was a jungle, and walking a few miles into it, turned into the gravel outwash of the Yalong Glacier. And they realized that at Yalong Glacier, they came about 4,000 miles from below. And here, the porters paid off the ones who were carrying their essential luggage, and that's because of the route that was getting more and more difficult, and from here up the glacier, it was too difficult for them. And due to this, they had to halt for some time at the Yalong Camp. It was a substantial camp from where the climbers got acclimatized by climbing many nearby peaks. Also, plans were made for the further moving of goods from Yalong to a base camp much higher up the glacier. And you know what? It took them 10 days to reach up there. And in the next 4 days, they targeted to reach up to Kemp's Buttress. Immediately after the acclimatization period, they gradually started stepping up and exactly after 4 days, they reached up to the next checkpoint. From here, the brutality of this mountain began. The left bank of the glacier was an arena of continual avalanches from Talong, so it would have been good for them to ignore that way, and that's exactly what they did. They took the opposite bank, even though the ice was very broken there, but it's better to fall on any icy lake than being graped in an avalanche, right? But it wasn't going to be that much easy for them. Kemp's buttress flanks the eastern side of an icefall that descends Kanchenjunga from about 7200 meters to the glacier at about 5500 meters. 
The top of the buttress is at 5,900 meters, and from there, it's absolutely going to be a harsh experience. Then, in Kemp's mind, a thought pops up that there might be a feasible way further up the icefall. From the top of the buttress, however, Ben and Hardy took two days trying to get onto the icefall itself, and even Evans and Jackson joined them with the effort, and although they then managed to get onto the icefall, unfortunately, they couldn't make any further progress. You could figure out the situation they were in and how badly they were struggling there by simply hearing George Ban saying, We spent two days of the most exhilarating ice climbing of our lives trying to find a route. It made the Kumbu Icefall look like a children's playground. Were we to be defeated so soon? It isn't going to be that easy. And then, Hardy spotted a small glacier descending the western buttress. The wall of it was on the far side of the glacier, and that small glacier reached down from a location they called Hump to a point on the icefall roughly level with their vantage point. So the mutual decision had been taken that to abandon their present attempt and try all over again with a hope to reach the western side of that icefall. Actually, the intention was to climb up to the hump along the western side of the western buttress and to achieve this involved moving base camp. Evan's plan was to climb to the hump and then drop down to the lower icefall, and after that, they were going to attempt a short climb to the top of the lower icefall to reach a plateau at the foot of the upper icefall. And by April 26, Ben and Hardy had pitched Camp 1. Days passed. They were gradually conquering the camps one by one, and it's on the day of May 25, 1955. They had two hours of oxygen left, and they had to reach the summit by 3 p.m. to avoid an emergency bivouac on the way down. This required oxygen at 6 liters a minute, and the climb led to a stance from where, to their surprise, the actual summit was 6 meters away and 1.5 meters higher. Even though this was the first ascent of the mountain, as agreed, they didn't go up onto the summit itself, and the next day on May 26, Hardy and Strether showed up at the last camp at Camp 6. They stayed overnight, and the next day, they saw Pemi George, which was one of the Sherpas and the brother-in-law of Dawa Tenzing, who had died at the base camp. Evans decided to leave the mountain quickly, only taking equipment, only taking equipment that could be readily carried and abandoning the rest. While the initial march in to avoid high passes that might be snowbound, they had left the Singalila Ridge quite far south at Fulat to head down into the jungle of Nepal. On the return march in heavy rain, they went up on the ridge further north after Ramsar and followed along the crest to avoid leeches infesting the valleys at the time of the monsoon. And finally, on June 13th, they were back at Darjeeling safe and sound. It was undoubtedly an exciting and enthralling journey, but the right decisions at the right time have made a successful return possible. And that's all we have for you in this video. Do like the video if you enjoyed it, and until then, stay safe ahead.